All right, well, let's move on to our next topic, and that is a big issue that is happening, and that is that a lot of states and a lot of areas are looking to create legislation for driver protections. But these companies are not happy with that because that means that it's infringing on them being able to exploit workers. And if you don't believe that, that's exactly the truth. Unfortunately, um, it is. And they're going to go kicking and screaming like a two-year-old when you tell them no and they want the brownie. Uh, that's yeah. exactly how these companies are acting when it comes down to these legislations. And a lot of the times people prob- like you and I are probably going to be happy for the most part because it's going to help when it comes to false deactivations. It's going to help set up pay or minimum pay standards. It's going to set up driver protections. Uh, it could set up you know, pay time off, different things like that. Uh, healthcare. There's a lot of things there when it comes to it. Sure, they're happy about Prop 22, but are they happy about the Seattle and the Washington bill? No, they just have to accept it because that's their reality. And if they want to operate in that area, that's how they have to roll the ball. That's that's how yeah. it came. But uh, the rest of the country is pretty much open. Uh, not every place, but quite a bit. So now yeah. they're 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 really campaigning hard against drivers to to uh, try to get them on their side saying that uh, you know things like their uh, access to the platform is could be reduced or something could be a problem. Um, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The typical, uh, uh, typical playbook, bro. You know, it's like, let's do the scare tactics. This, by the way, is going to the passengers, not to the drivers, because ooh. I, I interviewed Stephanie V. Hill, who is a freshman um, house member in Colorado. It's on our channel. You can go watch it. She's sponsoring a bill called 2398, SB 2398. It's basically full transparency and no more unjust deactivations for all gig workers, not just rideshare. Okay. And now comes DoorDash. (laughs) See, they go like, well, they're crying foul. You know, they go, the Colorado Senate is considering a bill that would impose another tax look at this language how you know by the way the 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 tax that they're talking about is going to be like less than 10 cents Mm -hmm. (laughs) but they're not they're not going to put it in there they're going to make it they're going to make it the extreme that they can as as close to to the like that line where they're just completely lying versus you know still telling part truth yeah and then and then it says you know, um, another tax on top of last year's first in the nation delivery tax. Um, Okay. Uh, He goes, look at this, look at this paragraph got me really well. I was laughing. He goes, with consumers already facing skyrocketing inflation, (laughs) the bill would raise the cost of deliveries. Uh, DoorDash, listen, you know, we're no dummies here. All I'm telling you is this is a bunch of hogwash. (laughs) <laughs> Inflation, <laughs> you have raised Uber and Rideshare, Lyft and Rideshare, DoorDash, Uber Eats have raised the fares without sharing the wealth with the drivers since 2019, whoever wrote this at DoorDash. So let's not get into this. Now, if you disagree with me, whoever wrote this at DoorDash, please come and show me the money and tell me your numbers, okay? Okay. The fares have been going up irregardless of this bill, sir or madam, at DoorDash. So Mm -hmm. shove it, number one. And this bill, by the way, this bill, this is the language from the bill that I put it in here. Mm -hmm. The bill requires a delivery network company, which is a DNC, or a transportation network company, TNC. This is exactly from the bill, Chris. Operating in the state to provide various disclosures to their drivers and to the consumers of the DNC and TNC regarding payments that a consumer makes to these companies. Now, Mr. and Mrs. DoorDash on the left, I'm back on your case now. What is wrong with this that you're objecting? When you raise the fares for the last three years, four years on the consumer, on deliveries and rideshare passengers, your excuse has always been, oh, it's the tax, oh, it's the city, oh, it's legislation. No, it's not. It's your race to profitability, people. It has nothing to do with it because you're in such horrible businesses that you have to charge as much as you can and pay as little as you can, which your algorithms are accomplishing beautifully these days, supposedly. If you're 
ever order food, people, and you see the fees on there, that has nothing to do with legislation. And if you look at the same order from the same restaurant you placed two years ago, the delivery fee, service charge, this fee, that fee has gone through the roof. Now, what percentage of that has been passed on to the driver? Because delivery these days have become basically working for tips. With Uber and DoorDash base minimum delivery fees down to $2 per order. Two, DoorDash, are you watching this? On the other hand, you're charging 12. Now, one of the reasons tipping has declined is because for a burrito, the poor consumer is paying $10, $12, $15 in delivery fees, service fees, and all that. And you know and what? $20 for they, Starbucks. Yeah. And they have no clue, by the way, Chris, that the driver is only getting 2 bucks out of that 12 this bill will introduce complete transparency. So now when a customer orders food, it's going to say, oh, by the way, you're paying 12 for this in service fees and delivery fees and all that good stuff without tipping now. Oh, by the way, the driver is only going to make three bucks out of the 12. You know what? They may bring back some tipping. You know what I'm saying? Because, because mm -hmm. at the moment, when you pay 12, 15 bucks for delivery and service fees on your DoorDash tab, you may think, you know, the delivery guy or gal is making good money. Well, now there's transparency. Now they're going to know that this poor driver is bringing your burrito from four miles away for three bucks. Maybe they'll tip more. So DoorDash, if you have any opposition to this, please come here. I'm, I'm right here. Show me the money. We'll have you on anytime you like. Yeah. But that's not just DoorDash that's happening. It's also... You know other areas so this is vote no on chicago's new rideshare ordinance so <laughs> you know, we, we talked about this to. we talked about this recently uh you know this is going what a month and a half ago probably probably eight weeks ago now or something i think we talked about uh, chicago and them bringing you know similar type legislation to the board when it comes to you know driver protections and um you know different things like that so uh, basically, this one is a thing from the Illinois Coalition of Independent Work, which we all know is just code name for Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and all these other companies. Um, but this is a new ordinance could dra dramatically increase costs for riders and limit access to affordable transportation at a time where inflation is at a 40-year high and our economies are recovering. Wait, didn't we just read that on the DoorDash side? You would think the same person wrote this? <laughs> I think the same person freaking wrote it, yeah. <laughs> so right there, there, that just goes to show you, it's it's yeah. these companies there. And it says the rideshare ordinance recently introduced in Chicago threatens to limit access to affordable transportation and the flexibility upon which drivers <laughs> depend. No, actually, it probably would help drivers. Um, similar ordinances in, uh, in other cities have unintended effects on drivers while drastically uh -huh. increasing costs for riders. And they highlight Seattle's minimum pay ordinance increased prices for riders by more than 50 percent but you know what drivers over there are loving it because they're getting paid they're getting paid time off you know we just had uh did, didn't we just post the uh, the the video with uh yeah. walter yeah, yeah there, there's a there's a we, we had walter our seattle-based driver or washington-based driver on talking about is seattle's model the best and you know here's here's the crazy part there is um when you talk about these companies like Uber and Lyft, they will, will they'll kind of say the the other thing, like, "Oh, we have taken the steps in order to accomplish the legislation, like Prop Twenty Two, and the thing in Seattle when it comes to the driver side to make it seem like, oh, they were they were part of it and they came to the table and they're happy about it." But in actuality, they're kicking and screaming like a two year old who you said can't have the yeah, cookie. They are. Yeah, they are. Um, and then you know, and this is another ordinance by uh, the older woman Garza, and hopefully it's going to pass. Look, man, there is a movement happening in the country. This is not just Illinois and, and Colorado. It's Massachusetts. It's Connecticut. It's, you know, it, 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 it's uh, how many more states? I think seven or eight. Nevada is joining the party. You know, they're getting the squeeze play. Legislation by legislation mm -hmm. and state by state, city by city. And they're fighting mad. And, you know, I, I understand why they're doing what they're doing. You know, I get it. But one thing that irks me in all this is when they send this to, they, they're sending this to the passengers, Chris, and to the consumer. Now, yep. in the Colorado bill, they're opposing it because now the game is up. 
the, 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 the consumer is going to find out that, oh, I just got charged 15 bucks for delivery fee without tip and my driver only made three. Because every time when I have ride share, right, and I do lift, and I show them because, as you know, all the way through the trip, the upfront fare shows on the lift, right? And when the, mm -hmm. when the passenger sees it and he just paid 15 I made like four, the guy goes, are you serious? Is this what's happening? The Colorado bill is going to make that simple. When you're ordering your food or your ride share, let's say you're driving, taking a 10-mile trip for 50 bucks. Well, it's going to say you're paying 50 but your driver is getting 14 <laughs> yep. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> so like the, and that and that's that's what they want to hide. That's the yeah. whole reason why because they they want to make it seem like oh well the drivers are are getting yeah, it because the, the, the other side the, uh, if you looked at the other side of that that one screenshot it was saying how the a recent study came out that said uh, rideshare drivers in Chicago were making thirty five dollars an hour after expenses. Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that? What? Yeah. No after expenses after expenses. And here, are they are they trying to go to the online time again versus uh uh, uh I'm sorry um are they are they separating the times again so you got I, your I, online versus your engaged there. time no, yeah I don't know what they're doing but let me tell you if people were making thirty five bucks after expenses in Chicago okay nobody would work at a regular job for eighteen okay <laughs> everybody would be driving right here okay period. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, why would you? <laughs> uh, so, so you know, all this stuff is happening. You know, they're crying, they're battling. You know, they have their own blobby. It's called Flex. I go, I get you, I get you. If you guys want to come on, you know, more of them welcome to do so. We'll have a civil debate, and we'll send you with some parting gifts. <laughs> and to me, <laughs> I'm open to any kind of conversation that shows how scrupulous you people are by saying, "Oh, inflation is hurting the consumer." Well, I've been raising the rates without paying the driver anyway, but now yeah, that's going to come out. What, what about that? that, that that's out. you know, inflation has been rising. You're right. Yeah, but what right. about the drivers when you're taking and squeezing the pay? And that means yeah. you're, you, drivers have to now work harder in order to still make the same that they were making, uh, and then have to work more on top of that because of all of the inflation that's going on. You, you know, you're forgetting. You know, you're you're forgetting you know one part of the the equation there. Yeah, but don't you know Dara said the same thing and the stuff went on the interview? Don't you know that yep. uh, <laughs> the drivers are immune to inflation, Chris? We we don't pay for inflation. We we have nothing to do. No, with no, we, we. No, no, that that's that's Uber. They're like, oh, we we're happy about the, yeah, the that we're happy market about market because that means more drivers are available. Uh, yeah, yeah, All right, yeah. well let let's see what what let's see what Risher will be able to do for the driver experience. Let's well, see if we default to Uber versus. Or I'm sorry, if we default to Lyft instead of Uber. <laughs> we're gonna find out yeah but anyway so yeah that's they're fighting mad good for them keep fighting there's a movement and by the way i read all the bills if like the colorado bill personally and everything i have is behind that bill so if i need to go to colorado and talk to legislatures or whatever i'm game if i oh, I, I would be game too yep you, if you I can do, I you can it, i am 100 percent behind that bill sb 2398 <laughs> Full transparency mm -hmm. and no more unjust deactivations for less than a dime on a trip. Stop complaining, people. Please, if you're in Colorado, whoever it is now or later, call your legislature, call Stephanie Vigil's office in support of this bill. I am 100% behind it. There you, go. you know what? Not only that, I mean, you, you might be watching this in the, the, rare, the, the, the rare possibility that you're not in Colorado. And you're like, I'm in somewhere else in the country. Why can't yeah. this happen for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. You can actually take those bills, copy yeah. and paste them and send them to your legislators. You can actually do that. And then they can craft legislation that's pretty similar if they see the need for it, too. So there yeah. is that possibility where you could potentially do that. It's just a matter of you know researching this. And we like talking about it because it's what's going on in the areas uh, and it can affect drivers differently. Uh, so this is how we want to make sure people know about that. And again, this is something not only on knowing your worth, knowing everything about it, but you can also see how they're clawing tooth and, tooth and nail to try to, uh, um, you know, not let something like that pass. Uh, and it just kind of shows you shows you everything about it. But shady, um, shady, dirty. <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. 
Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.